and welcome back to Tabletop Jason. I'm Jason, and this is the 50th episode of this channel. So to celebrate, I'm going to try something completely different and try a video game. But this isn't just any video game. This is the best video game ever made. And I know I review tabletop games here, you know, board games and card games, but this game is called NetHack, and if you're familiar with it, it plays a lot like second edition AD&D. So with that said, I'll give you a little bit of background about the game. It is based ASCII game. It was created in 1987, 33 years ago, believe it or not. And it's done entirely through text. So I'll go over the rules as I play, but I'll kind of give a quick demo on how to play. And if you've played any kind of role-playing game, computer or tabletop, you'll get it pretty quick. Your character's little amper stand will point all that out as we go. The best thing about this game, before we get started, it's what they call a roguelike game, which means it's the type of RPG where you get one chance. You either win or lose, and that's it. On these newer ones, like NetHack, you know, as new as 1987 is, you can still save the game, but you can't go back to save points. So when you die, that's it. You have to start over with a new character. This game is extremely complex. It's free to play. You can find all sorts of NetHack servers online, or you can download your own locally. And I'll have links to all of that in the description. So the first thing you do is create your character. I'm going to play as a wizard, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So it says, shall I pick your character's things? We're going to say no. So I'll be a wizard, I'll be an elf, I'll be a male, and yeah, that's it. So let's start the game. It gives a little description, um, and you know what? We don't care about the description, but we do care about these stats. I'm chaotic, because I'm an elf, I guess. Very low charisma. These are just like AD&D &D or DD. &D. You roll for your stats. So I have an intelligence of 18, which is good. The rest of those... Eh, they don't really matter. We'll go over that in a minute. Your goal is to find this amulet at the bottom of the dungeon and bring it to the top of the dungeon. Very few humans have been able to do that. So looking at this first screen, what you see is nothing. You see text. So your character is an ampersand. Your pet is an F. And obviously F stands for cat. You move with the number pad. You land on objects and you pick them up. That's an altar. We'll go over that in a minute. Uh, there's a few default options I like to change, though. The first is to make sure auto pickup is set to false, because otherwise you pick up every object you run into. And when you hold too many objects, you're penalized, because you can only hold so many things at once. I usually don't like color, but we'll, we'll keep the color on for this, just for so it's not completely text. Highlight pet, we'll keep that on. Highlight pile, I don't like that option. All that does is if you have two objects stacked on top of each other, it highlights it, and that's no fun. It just makes everything highlighted. You don't pick up everything you see. Gosh, that might be it for now. Show experience, we want that. And I like show score. Your time. You're asking why I change all these things. It's just kind of a... That's just how I do it. Okay, now that all that is done, now we can look at the game. So you're, you're, you're the ampersand. Your pet is a highlighted animal. If you're a wizard, it's a cat. You'll see up in the corner, there's a little uh, less than sign. That is a staircase going up. And to my right, there's a little underscore. That's an altar. You can pray on altars. You can sacrifice animals on altars. If you appease your gods, you get cool things. If you anger your gods, then you get in trouble. So there's a whole alignment rule you have to do. There's that little X in the corner. That's a grid bug I'm going to fight. But first, we'll look at objects. To view your objects, you hit an I for inventory. So you'll see you start with a blessed quarterstaff. So blessed and cursed are another thing objects have. If you have an object that's cursed, you can't drop it, and it'll often have a penalty. The plus one on the quarterstaff means a plus one on my attack. Just like in AD&D, I have a cloak of resistance, I've got some scrolls, 
um, a scroll of create monster will create a random monster enchant weapon will give another bonus to my weapon force bolt just shoots a bolt of energy at a, at a monster so when you have a spell book that's the spells you know you've got potions you've got rings uh, we'll go over some of that stuff later wand of light will light up a room okay so I'm actually going to right away read the scroll K to get my weapon stronger. So read, yeah, read, which is an R. You want to read your K. You read the scroll, it disappears. My quarter staff grows, glows blue. And as you see, it's a plus two now. So now you move with the number pad. I'm going to go attack that monster. Everything on this game is turn based. See the little T down there? It's turn 14 already. So you attack the monster, if you're right next to him, you just move. I killed a grid bug. Your turn increments with every space. There's a potion. If you push, the comma will pick up the potion. You don't want to drink potions that you don't know what they are. You need to identify items because they have bad effects. You also need gold because they're shops. So now altars, it's, it's rare that you have an altar on your first floor. That's neutral. So a neutral altar, I don't want to pray at because I am chaotic. But with altars, you can drop objects. Let's see, hit. You know what? I'm not going to go over the what you hit because that's all in the instructions and it'll just make this last forever. But you can drop your objects on an altar. And it'll tell you if it's cursed or not. That's an uncursed bubbly potion. When we identify those, there's potions that will heal, there's potions that will help you go up levels. So those potions I have are all nothing I want to use at the moment. Fire resistance, a ring I could put on, but I don't like to put on rings because they drain your food. Every move you make, you lose a little bit of food. Rings make your food go down a little fat. So as you see, you just kind of explore the dungeon. NetHack is a game where every run, every dungeon is randomly generated to a point. It's got one big common theme, but the floors are always random. So we've got some other objects. There's a spell book. Think over spells, so I've just picked up a spell book. You look at my inventory, I've got a spell book of detect food and force bolt, and the one I just picked up, the science spell book. We don't know what that is. If you cast a spell, it'll show you the ones you've read the spell book to, and it'll give a percent of fail. So, force bolt, every wizard starts with force bolt, and they have 0% chance of failure. Detect food has a 62% chance of failure. As you get higher levels, that percent goes down. I also have a large box. It's locked, but you can bash the box. I'm trying to force it open. I will. I destroyed the box. But I got in there a scroll. There's also a gray stone. Gray stones are either going to be luck stones, or there's a food ration. They're either going to be luck stones or load stones. You never want to pick up a load stone, but I have a pet, and my pet just picked up that gray stone, so we know it's not a load stone because a pet would not pick up a load stone. So I'm going to pick it up, and now I'm going back to the altar. We there's little shortcuts you can do if you hit uh, five and then your direction. You'll go until you hit a door or stop to speak. And I go drop them on the altar to see if they're cursed or not. Uh oh, something was cursed. My scroll is cursed. I'm still going to keep it because you can remove curses from things. But now as we see, that spell book I have is not cursed. And since my intelligence is an 18, I should be able to read it with little trouble even though I'm only on level 1. So, we're going to read that. It's a P. Whoops. I don't know what I did there. Push the wrong button. It's difficult to comprehend, but I'm gonna go for it. I learned create monster. Now this is cool because 
you can... When you kill monsters, you can pick up their corpse. You can eat their corpse, too. If you... Um, if you sacrifice them on an altar that's not your own altar when you're on a high enough level, you can convert the altar to your alignment, and then you can pray on it, or sacrifice objects on it until you get a magical. We don't want to pick up a sling. We do want to pick up that potion. Ooh. Never read a scroll of punishment, but I'll pick it up, because you can also erase scrolls and write spells you want on them, or you can sell them in a shop. This little symbol is it? Uh oh, oh, that's my cap. That's my stairs down. I'm not ready to go to level two, but I'm gonna just pop down for a second and I'll tell you why. Sometimes there are trap doors. There's a fortune cookie. Sometimes there are trap doors and you'll fall down to the next level. So if you have gone down there, I'll know that there is my uh, stairway so you can find your way up. The cat will follow you up or down stairs as long as he's touching you when you go through it. There is a kobold. Let's try to fight. I killed him. I don't want any of that stuff. My cat is probably going to eat him. So about food and turns. When you move spaces, the turn increments. What is this? Turns go up with every move you make, and you use a little bit, or you get a little bit hungrier. When you, get hungry, you need to eat, and if you run out of food, you starve to death. Or you get weaker, or you pass out. So when you find food, you want to keep the food, and the game tells you when you're hungry. Now that is a lichen. Boom. Lichen, I don't know how you say it. Those, you can always eat. You can't always eat monsters, but you can always eat those. I'm not going to eat it now, I'm going to just carry it with me, I got more money, whoops, here. so it's always best practice to explore the entire level before you go to the next, because this isn't quite, I mean this isn't like Dragon Warrior, it's not really a game of, of grinding, but you do want to be a little bit stronger. So just like any other role-playing game, you see the experience. So where it says XP down there, it shows I'm level 1 and I've got 13 experience points. I believe wizards go to level 2 when they reach 20. So it's sometimes a good idea to go up that first level. Man, I must have a lucky day. Whoa, what happened there? A bear trap is on my feet. So now I've got to just try to get out of it. You need to get out of it, you just keep moving and moving. Door, the little crosses are doors. You can tell there's the rooms and the hallways. And you're saying, why would you play this when you could play any other game that actually has pictures? Well, they actually make versions of this that are graphical, but come on. Oh, now there, it says I'm hungry. You're hungry? You push E to eat, you look at your menu, I'm going to eat that lichen corpse first, now I'm not hungry anymore. If you run out of food though, it is very bad. There we go. Let's go back to the altar, drop my stuff so I know what's cursed and what's not cursed. So that square amulet, I don't want to put on because it's cursed, I don't even know what it... I don't, even, I don't know what happened there. I don't even know what it does. Usually a cursed amulet will be an amulet of strangulation, which will pretty much kill you. Scroll of Punishment makes a ball and chain come around your foot, and then you move a lot slower. You, can, you use like two or three turns per move. And when something's cursed, you can't drop it. If you have a cursed sword, you can't drop it. Oh, I killed something. I'd kind of like to... Ah, dang it! Did I just die? No. Whew! Okay, I need to pick up those things so I remember there's a trap there. I'm gonna just drop whatever it was I just picked up. Uh, where is it? Throwing stars. We don't need throwing stars because we're wizards. Wizards can shoot arrows. Shoot force bolts. 
I am going to walk around just a little bit. I'd like to go up one more level. There we go. Uh, what else is there to say about this game while we kind of grind around? See your hit points. I have 11 hit points. I've got... 9... Oh, AC. Well, wait. Up in order. 11 hit points. When those get down to 0, I die. I'm going to cast a spell. A force bolt. Boom! And I crumbled up. I destroyed that boulder. Now there's 49 little rocks. So you see my power, it says 3 of 8. Power is like magic points. And it comes back over time. Also, I need power to cast spells. What was that? Control P will repeat messages. You're beginning to get hungry. Okay, so I need to eat again. That little lich and corpse didn't give me a lot of food. This fortune cookie won't either, but the fortune cookie has clues. They say a long sword is not a light sword. Ooh, interesting. I don't know what that means. There's a newt. She turned me into a newt. Newts are cool because if you're at maximum power and you eat a newt, sometimes, yes, you feel mild buzz and you gain magic points if you're maxed out. If you're not at your max, you just gain, gain some. But if you have your max, you gain more on your max. And we're hungry again. We're gonna eat that final food ration I have, and now I won't be hungry for a while. You get a lot out of food ration. We're gonna still eat that newt, though. Ah, see, that, that time I didn't get anything out of the newt. Okay, what do you think? Should I just go down to the next level? I kind of wanted to get up to level two before I went down to level two. Let's see if I have anything that's no. Should we just do it? Let's bring the cat. Just hope we don't get anything too hard. So, oh, there we go. Now, 18 experience. So wizards can hold any object and wear any armor, but if you have metal armor, let's look at the spells. So it says 0% fail and 62% fail on the other two. If you have armor, if you have metallic armor or weapons, that fail percent goes up. So as a wizard, you usually want to stick with leather armor and cloaks, leather helmet. I don't think you can have a shield. Let's go down. Push the dot, you stay in one spot for a turn. So they like said you need your pet to be touching you. Now we're in a new dungeon level. There's a grid bug. I killed it. A lot of times you get into a hallway where there's nothing and you have to search for it. We've got a spell. We don't know what that spell does. Our scroll. We've got a large round shield. Wizards can't use shield, so we'll leave that lane. I see some money. There's a floor down. I'm going to wait till the cat's not. Ooh, we got some food. Oh, it was a trap. Pick up that food ration. Get out of here. Oh, there's a dog. Dog. And I killed, I was a jackal. I killed him. So you see, I went up to level two. So now it says level two at 20 experience points. I have 17 hit points. The secret to net hack is to always pay attention. Because look, every time I push the button, I attack. If I do it too fast, I won't pay attention, and uh, I, won't, I might not realize that my hit points are draining. Battles do look pretty quick. It's turn-based, but you still got to pay attention. There's also some nasty monsters that will just pop up and get you. There's the floating eyes, where if you attack them, they paralyze you. So you always have to go kind of slow because they hide in a fountain. There's a fountain. You can drink from fountains. You can dip scrolls in fountains to erase them. I'll show you how to do that. Go down. So there's the fountain. We go. Dip. What do I want to dip? I don't want that. Let's say I don't want that scroll of punishment. So I'll put it in there. Actually, I shouldn't do that because that's worth a lot if you sell them. 
but I would put it in there and then I would have an empty scroll. And then you can find a magic marker and if you've identified a spell, you can write it on a scroll. There we kill a gecko. Boulder. You know, on the version I'm used to, boulders are not a giant O. I keep thinking it's an ogre. There's an that F is probably a fungus. It's a shrieker. We're gonna use a spell on that shrieker because he's kind of strong. It's a force bolt. Boom! I killed it. Force bolt you can do whether you're touching them or not. You can also blow up boulders. Now there's 11 rocks. So you can do force bolt is a ranged item. You find lots of gold sometimes. You see I have 22 gold pieces. You, there are shops in here. There's even a town in this game when you go down to Gilmish Mines. There's some kind of animal running around there. I don't see him though. Was it a dingo? Scroll. I have more gold pieces. You do get to a point in the game where, oh, zombie. You get to a point in the game where money doesn't matter anymore though. Whoops, push the wrong button. So you keep exploring and exploring. And like I said, you can't, uh oh, the jackal attacked my kitten, but as you see, the kitten killed my jackal. And your pets actually gain experience as well. I'm walking around this room like this because I'm searching for secret doors. We'll head back. Oh, there's another shrieker. No, it's a red mole. Oh no, look what he did. So it says my quarter staff smothers. So you'll see it's a blessed burnt quarter staff. So even though it's a plus two, there's a penalty on it since it's burnt. But if you get an enchant weapon, did I go up a level? I did. If you get an enchant weapon and drink it while confused, it'll fortify. I'm assuming there's another secret door here because the dungeons are usually pretty spread out. Oh, there's an orc. Let's attack that orc. Or goblin. So he has an iron... He has a dagger and a skull cap, which is a helmet. I can't wear metal helmets, so I'm not going to take I could, but it would hurt my spell. And you see I went up a level, so now my percent of fail went down to 53 on those two spells. So as you go up levels, you get stronger, your spells get easier to cast. I'm hungry. Do I have more food? Okay. Uh-oh. That was rotten food, but I finished eating it. So now I'm confused. When you're confused, you move in a random space, and you may actually attack your pet. And if you attack your pet, that is bad. Your pet will attack back. Sometimes that might kill you, but if it doesn't, and you kill your pet, then you anger your god, and then you get curses. So I'm just going to rest on space until I'm And that was what I did. So let's go down. You know what? Let's get. Ooh, I hear footsteps of a guard. Okay. That just means that there's a treasure vault in here, and if you can dig through a wall, you can find it. It's most likely in the lower right corner where there's some empty space. So if we have a pickaxe or a wand of digging, we could go dig for it. And then there's like a secret treasure chamber with a whole bunch of money. We'll go down to level three. Oh, that was that trap. I'm going to pick those up. Get out of that trap. Drop them. So that little symbol there is a trap. And there's an item in there. You don't see that symbol. Let's keep exploring the hallway. we got to search. So, you see, I can see through that hallway there. But I can't... I can move at an angle. I guess. So I'm going to search a little bit there. So now we have the hallway back. Things are dark. Oh, I thought that was a spell book. The symbol for door and spell book are the same. There's already an arrow down. Money. I'll go down to see. Oh, there's one of those floating eyes. You can identify. See, it's a floating eye. If I would attack that guy, I would be paralyzed. I'm going to back up from him. I'm going to shoot him with my force bolt. 
BAM! I killed him. And I have a blindfold. I'll talk about that in a second. If you, the first time you kill a floating guy, you want to eat him. Here's why. You get a strange mental, whatever that word is. That means when you're blindfolded, when you're blind, you can see monsters. So now I have a blindfold, if I put that on, let's do it. Put on E, I'm blind. You can see other monsters when you're blind. So we know there's some kind of lizard thing up there and there's either an orc or an elf up there. But I'm going to take it off because I don't like walking around blind. And leather armor, I can wear that, but I don't want to put it on until it's cursed. And now I'm going to show you a little bit of the annoying part of NetHack. Uh oh, I killed that kobold. He took those arrows. He's done. I'm going all the way back to level one. I'm gonna leave my pet here, so I don't have to worry about trying to catch him with me. He'll be wait. He'll be there waiting for me. Let me go all the way back to level one, so that I can. Uh oh, I'm stunned. Stunned is like confused, only worse. That thing stunned me. So I'm gonna just zap. Never ever eat a yellow mold. Most animals you kill, you don't want to eat. Going all the way back up to level one so that I can go drop the armor on the altar and make sure it's not cursed. Because if it's cursed, it might give me a minus one penalty. And I won't be able to remove it because it's cursed. When you're playing NetHack, it's sometimes a good idea to take note of where the altars are. I'm going to drop all the items that I don't know what they were. None of them were cursed. Pick them up put on the armor, but you can't put it on because I have to take off my cloak first. So take off my cloak. Now notice my AC is 10. NetHack uses the same AC rules as older Dungeons & Dragons. The lower number is better. So now I will wear my armor. So armor plus 2 on your AC and now I'm going to put my cloak back on. Whoops. Yeah, my AC is 7, so that's pretty cool. And now we'll go all the way back to level 4. What was that? We'll go all the way back to level 4. Uh-oh. So I'm out of food, and I'm hungry. I get cranky when I'm hungry. Okay, so we killed the jackal. I don't like to eat jackal. I don't like to eat random monsters but when you're hungry sometimes it's a good idea so we'll do it yummy he tastes okay so that's not so bad he didn't poison you or or anything i'm gonna go all the way oh there's another one killed him we're not gonna eat him when you're hungry you can pray and then you'll be full also but you can't pray too much you have to wait a certain amount of turn, turns in between praying. Okay, we're back on level four. Money. And look at this. I can't read that, but whenever you get to where there's a clue, that usually means there's a secret door. I hit S to search, and you see I search and search, and then that secret door comes up. It doesn't go anywhere, but large box. Let's try to open the box. It's locked, so we'll force it again. Succeeded in picking the lock. So now we can loot the box, see what's in there. Look, we got a scroll and a potion. Sweet. Okay. We keep going. So leave me some comments. What do you think about this game? It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Really, if you don't like this ASCII stuff... Graphical versions are just too... Uh oh, there's a blob. You don't want to attack them barehand because they might... Yeah, that acid. They might splash acid on you. And now I'm hungry again. So, I'm hungry and I'm out of food. That might be something bad. We're going to zap him. Green mold. Ooh! So with that said, you are awake. Elves, once they reach level 4, become immune to sleep spells. I guess because they're elves. What was that? An iguana? I don't want to eat an iguana. I'm going to wait until I get weak and then I'm going to pray. Okay, we no. 
Oh, now I'm weak. So here we pray. We haven't done anything to anger our God. So we're surrounded by shimmering light and our stomach fills content. And that should last a while now. As long as you don't cast too many spells. Casting spells, things that use up food faster are wearing a ring, casting spells, and carrying more than your strength allows. So I have a strength of 12, which for a wizard is actually not that bad, but you get some point where it'll say you're burdened if you're holding too much stuff. We gotta find the secret door. There's, oh, there we go. Ooh, and there's another bug, a grid bug. That eye is probably a means, yep. You always gotta watch your hit points. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up this gold and then I'm going to explain why there's another door going down. Ooh, and there's a bag. Where'd that bag go? Drop it. So if, it, if your pet picks up an object, you know by default that that object is not cursed. Your cat or your uh, pet will not walk on cursed items unless they have to. And if they have to, you'll get a message. The bag's empty. I'm going to pick it up though because you can put things in there. Oh, I lost train of thought though. If they have to walk over it, you'll get some sort of notification. Like, I forget what it says. The that has an uneasy feeling or something, or cautiously, they cautiously step on it, and that'll tell you it's a cursed item. So, I am going to go down, I'm not taking my pet because he'll die. Down here, this is the Gnomish Mines. It's a very complex dungeon. It's not, whoa, it's full of dwarfs and gnomes that will kill you when you're at a weak level. So I like to be a little stronger before I go down there. It's not required for the game to go into the Gnomish Mines, but at the bottom of the Gnomish Mines is a Luck Stone, and if you have a Luck Stone... That guy wants to kill me. Luck Stone... You have a better chance of... Not dying. Finding better items. Your prayer timeout is quicker. That's an important one. You can only pray after so, so many turns. So this is a shop. It's a potion shop. You can chat with the owner. It talks about the problems with shoplifters. So you see all these potions. And I'm going to sell some potions here. You can only sell objects that are sold. I don't need a potion of blindness, monster de detection, or really see invisible. I'm going to sell all my potions. If you have higher charisma, you get better prices when you sell, and objects cost less. So we see some potions. So now just, you notice it says the kitten drops a cloudy potion. The kitten picked up that cloudy potion, so that does two things. One, it tells you it's not cursed. Two, if your kitten picks up an object and leaves the store, he just stole it. Which is cool. That's one way you can get things for free. But when you leave the shop, close it so your cat doesn't go in there and steal objects and you're not aware of it. I killed some people. And I kind of like to backtrack. And never ever attack a shopkeeper. It'll hurt your reputation with your god. I think even if you're chaotic. But it'll also hurt your charisma. You can't go back into that shop without getting attacked. And unless you're really strong, you'll die when you try to attack. We saw the Gnomish Mines. We're not going down there. There's a certain point. There's a level that has some shrines and things like that. I like to get down to that level before I go to the Gnomish Mines. Usually by then you'll be strong enough. So we'll wait for the cat to come. We'll go down here. What lies down this terribly dark door? Locked. So when a door is locked, if you have a key, you can unlock it. Otherwise, you've got to force it open. You can kick. 
when you kick a door, it actually exercises your strength. So when you go up a level, you may get a little stronger. There's a monster, it's a gecko. I was saying I was saying I'll go down to a certain level before I go to the gnomish mines and that level is anywhere between levels 5 and 8 I believe and it's got fountains and shrines where and some spell books, and then the game starts getting really hard. Let's get down to that one. Looking for secret doors. Secret door. Have you seen that one? Okay. Well, let's pretend my pet's name it just says your kitten. So my pet's name is. Some stuff we can sell. And then we've got some stuff we can buy. Okay, we don't need a scroll of punishment. We're selecting them what we want to sell. I want to keep the create monster. We don't need fire resistance. And those as we get stronger. We don't need a wooden flute. 150 gold, that's why I didn't dip that into the fountain earlier. And one problem we have is we're kind of stuck down here now unless we can find a wand of digging. I'm going to buy all the food rations I can find. One thing about food rations if you're in a store and you're hungry, food costs twice as much. I never get hungry in a store. Studded leather is stronger than regular leather armor. So let's buy that. And now look at that. A little trouble lifting. So now it says I'm for that armor and I'm going to take off my robe take off my other armor we'll wear that stronger armor put our robe back on so now our AC went down to six let's sell the armor we don't need lots of inventory management on this game just like a Ever see a scroll for uh oh mimic? Mimics are monsters disguised as items and they're tough guys. I'm gonna hit him. We'll have to try to defeat him with 
automatically. These are my force bolts on me. And I killed him. And we went up to level 5. Cool. So if you see a scroll that's worth around 10 gold pieces, it will be an identity scroll. And when you read an identity scroll, it will identify usually one object, but sometimes more. If it's, if it costs 80, usually an enchant weapon, but we're just gonna wait. I'm just hoping we can find, and you'll notice I keep buying all the items I find, or all the food. I'm hoping to find, uh oh. So when you use your force bolt on a mimic, in a shop. Make sure there's not a potion down the line because you'll break the potion and have to pay for it. I'm gonna buy all this nice food. Brass lantern, I'm going to buy that. Uh oh. Now we're we're in the carrying too much mode, we're burdened again, but Now that I'm burdened, I'll use a few more turns. Twenty-seven is probably going to buy it. It's called fast or something or another. Now let's read that scroll. So then you get to pick an object to identify. And we'll go with... We'll identify this scroll. And it's a magic mapping. Nice. And we're going to read another one. And we'll read it on... We'll identify a race stone. And it's a touchstone. It's not. We're gonna sell it. Let's read one more. If you have a so if you have a cursed scroll of identity, it doesn't do anything. I mean, it's no different than an uncursed one, with the exception that an uncursed one will very rarely let you identify two items, and then a blessed one will let you identify anywhere from three to everything. Aiming, we don't need a scroll of taming that lets you take a creature as a pet, but it's worth 100 gold. And I think we have one more. Oh, we have more than that. I want to run it on the bag. It's an uncursed sack, so it's been useless. See, that one lets us do another. Put that on potions, restore ability. Some monsters will take away some of your abilities, but if you have a luck stone, you can get them back. So I'm just going to sell this. So I think we had one more, didn't we? Yeah, one more. Let's see what this uncursed dark potion is. Ooh, extra healing. I'm not going to drink that yet. Clear potion, that's just water. Hey, there's a key. Riding gloves. I will buy those gloves. I'm not gonna put them on yet until I know that they're not first. Let's use that key on this chest. If there's an object in the chest, we can buy it. Not the only ring I use is there's a ring that will slow down your food. I can't think of what it's called. See if there's anything else to sell. Now 
No, I'm gonna keep that sack for now, just in case I want to group anything. If you have a bag of carrying and you put items in it, they don't weigh as much. So look at that. We left that shop with 550 gold. That's pretty cool. I guess they don't call it gold. They call it Zorknoids or something. It doesn't matter. It's just gold pieces. Search for a secret door. I need to find a way to get back to a an altar because I want to put on those gloves, but you don't want to put on gloves if you don't know if they're safe or not, because if you put them on and they're cursed, they'll be gloves of fumbling. And if you have gloves gloves of fumbling, you will have trouble casting spells. We're searching for secret doors. I'm not going to use that scroll of magic mapping until we get up back up to level five. I want to see if there's Oh, he had a potion. We can go down, but we're trying to go up. Let's see what this is. So now that I have a key, I don't have to break chests open anymore. That way we don't risk breaking what's inside them. hungry eat. I always eat whatever will fill me up the quickest or the shortest time so that I can free up and spots. They say that trap doors should always be marked caution trap door. Yes they should. If you enter a level of the dungeon and you get clues of of things sometimes, like you'll hear a cash register if there's a shop. Ooh, newts. Eat the newts. So I had the mild buzz, but since I wasn't maxed out on power, I gained some power, but I didn't gain more on my max. Oh, and that reminds me, if you're full hit points and you drink potions of healing, your maximum hit points go up. So, Let's drink this potion of extra healing and we'll gain two maximum hit points. If it was blessed, I'd gain five, but to bless something you need to have holy water and it's too early in the game to get any holy water. But this game might be short-lived if I can't get back up. Uh oh, we're at 18. Whoa, we're at 14. The dingo, the dingo is killing us. Ooh, I Let's get out of here. Uh, let's go back down. That Q, sometimes Q things are bad. I want to have a little more life before I go. There's another floating eye. So if you see a floating eye and you can't kill it with a range weapon, like a spell, or you could shoot an arrow or throw a rock or something, you put on the blindfold and then it can't blind you. Eat. So the garlic and the wolfsbane help against vampires, but I'm not going to carry those things around for a couple hours just on the chance of running into a vampire. Vampires will play later in the game. Do I see anything up there? No. Like I said, the reason I keep getting hungry so much is because these things I'm eating don't have a lot of stuff. Looking for secret doors, not finding any. I guess we'll have to go back up to level 5. Let's eat first. Wait a slime mold, that'll hold us over for a bit. Okay, there's a queue that is a... Ooh, it was a rock. Okay, now you saw how it said I was worried about my kitten? Control P lets you see things. Let's see, go back into your message history. So when it said you feel worried about your kitten, that means you're on the same level as your pet and your pet's being attacked. Well, it was being attacked by those creatures. Okay, and do you see where it says you feel more confident in your weapon skills? 
you can enhance your skill. And it doesn't do that automatically because you can't do it all the time and you don't want to use those up. I will enhance my quarter staff. And I'm a little bit stronger. You hear noise rumbling in the distance. That means there's a dwarf digging somewhere, which is a good thing because if we can get a pickaxe, we can dig in the dungeon and dwarfs that are Oh, this is freaky. Oh, dwarfs are digging through the dungeon. They're carrying a pickaxe, and if we get that pickaxe, we can also dig through the dungeon, get around that trap door, get back to the top level, and try to convert that altar. When you convert an altar to your alignment, you can sacrifice creatures on it. And after you sacrifice enough creatures, you'll get a magic weapon. And wizards have some good ones to pick. There's one called Magic Bane, which is one you pretty much try for if you're a wizard. It protects you from lots of resistances. If you remember, I sold my fire resistance ring that was because you know I'll eventually be resistant to fire and not need a ring like that. Killing some monsters. Hey, that guy shot something at me. Oh man, we gotta follow him. We gotta get that wonder digging from him. Where is he? Do I still have a detect monsters? Spell of no, this also detect food. Dang it. So we need to either a wand of digging or a pickaxe to get around. Oh, hey, I forgot. I have a blindfold. So I can put on my blindfold. And since I ate a frozen eye, I can see and where is he? He's staying blindfolded. To get that one to digging, you know what worries me is by the time I get to him, he may have already used it up. I think I'm gonna go back up. Another trick is once you have a pickaxe or a wand of digging, you can dig in the dungeon so you can dig a straight path to from uh, stairs to stairs and it doesn't take as long to get the levels when you have to go back. Did I see counting money? Okay, if you hear somebody counting money, it's probably just a guard. This one's kind of frustrating that we're killed the jackal. Okay, now you see where I am. I'm on the other side of that hole. So we have to figure out a way to break through those walls so that we can go at it from an angle. I have a magic mapping that'll map the dungeon level. And yeah, as we can see. There's other things you can do to fill that hole. If we could find a boulder, we could push it into there, and that would close the hole up. Not gonna happen though, is it? 
we're stuck here until you get a scroll of earth which would make boulders. So far, that's it. You could get boots of jumping and jump over it. You could get a scroll of earth to create boulders. You could find a boulder to push into it. You could find a pickaxe or wand of digging and dig through those walls to get around it. If there was a door, that wouldn't help either. Let's look at my inventory just once more in case there's anything I can could also levitate over it with boots of levitation. So I guess we just keep going down. Oh, my pet's okay. I'm going to keep exploring these levels then. Oh, there's that eye. The floating eye, not frozen eye. There we go. Killer bees. These can be difficult. They sting you, they can poison you. Tripe ration is like cat food or dog food. You can throw it at your pet when they're hungry. You can throw it at another animal. And they'll become your pet. Or they'll become tame. And sometimes they'll become your pet. Okay, there's a nymph. If they touch you, they take a random item and teleport away. I'm going to try to kill this guy with magic. And they usually carry an object, a potion of detection. And this is a statue. A statue of a brown mold. Once you're on level 5 or lower, you can, if you break statues, there's a chance they have a spell book hidden in them. And the higher up you get, or the lower you get in the dungeon, the higher the chances of there being spell books. That's kind of a cool way to get magic. Okay. Oh, a mimic. Eek. Okay, good. A leash, if you have a leash, you can put it around your pet. Nothing in there. Did I buy something? He's not letting me leave. Oh yeah. If you pick up something and don't pay for it, the shopkeeper will stand in your way when you try to leave. Uh, what just happened there? Look at that. I wasn't paying attention. See what I mean? And now I think I'm dead. I'm poisoned. And I'm dead. You die. So here's what happens when you die. Your game is over, and that's it. You're done. You can identify your possessions. Let's do that just for fun. So I had a cursed enchant weapon. So it's lucky I didn't read that, or it would have actually hurt my weapon. Have spells. Fruit juice gives you a little bit of health, like if you were uh, eating food. Hallucination, you never want to do that. That does weird things. And, uh, protection, so it just kind of shows some of my items. And then you have attributes, which is, you know, you don't get anything for this, but it's kind of fun to look over them sometimes. It shows you how far you got and your experience. And that is it. You can also see a list of all the creatures you defeated. And your conduct, sure. If you genocide a monster, you remove them from the game. And if you do it on a race, you remove all of them that use the same letter. So like, dwarfs and mind flayers are both use an H. So if you genocide, you have a blessed scroll and genocide H, you get rid of mind flayers. We didn't even run into any of those, but they're super dangerous. And we'll see a dungeon overview. That is it. Rest in peace, Jason1.
So that is NetHack. I wanted to do something different for my 50th video, and this was different, so I hope you enjoyed it enough. If you did, leave me a comment, and maybe I'll try again and play a little more seriously and try to win it so you can see all it takes to win. Sometimes it takes a long, long time. It's a pretty complex game. Look it up. I've got links to where you can get this in my description and I'll also throw in some links to some tips because like I said it is super complex it's a fun game it's a traditional role-playing game and it's awesome and I'll be back next week with the board and card games but this was a fun diversion so thanks for watching click that like click that subscribe and I'll see you next time